What's up, y'all, and a warm welcome back to Dear Glory. Over the last three years, I've gone through a complete whirlwind of figures and financial reports completely wrecking my brain on how art and artists are quantified in terms of economic worth. It's truly been an eye-opening path discovering the relationship between creativity and market values sometimes it's just like not the best thing that we want to go through right but now i'm eager to share the wisdom from this journey that i've been on and that i've learned through with you guys i'm mariah elise in today's session we're exploring five key lessons that I've learned about the art market indexes and how to navigate and utilize them. And if you don't know what an art market index is, I just want you to make it simple for yourself. Think of art market indexes as the art world's version of the stock ticker. It's tracking the ups and the downs of art's value, kind of like a financial heartbeat. In our session today, we'll transform this sophisticated topic of art market indices into five straightforward lessons then break down how to move through them. Now that we've gone ahead and set the stage with the big picture, I wanna take a second to zoom in and dissect these lessons one by one. Beginning with our first lesson, understanding art market indices. I want you to think of it like this. Art market indices are like, let's say scoreboards at a basketball game, but instead of points for baskets, they score every time a piece of art is sold at an auction, okay? Each painting or sculpture that gets a new owner essentially scores points for the artist's team on the big scoreboard. Each artist could be seen as a team with their body of work being their players. Every time one of their artworks is sold at auction for a high price or for whatever price, it's like scoring a goal or a basket increasing their team's ranking on the art market index. This score helps us see which artists are winning in this realm of the art market game. Like who's the LeBron James of painting? Or who is the Serena Williams of sculpture? Teams could also be different styles or periods of art, like impressionism, modernism, contemporary art. When an artwork from one of these categories sells, it's like that entire genre scores points. Let me give you a for instance. If a lot of impressionist paintings start selling for higher prices, the impressionist team moves up in the rankings. Here's another. African-American artists could be considered a team, okay? So in the context, of course, of the art market indices, when artworks by African-American artists are sold, especially if they fetch higher prices or garner a lot of attention, it can elevate the profile and the market value of the group as a whole. Keeping the points high for African-American artists in this case will be akin to maintaining or enhancing their visibility, their demand, and their market value. This is not just about economic gains, but also about cultural representation and influence. I wanna give you guys three reasons why it would be beneficial to keep points high in this game that we're talking about. Number one would be cultural significance. By keeping the points high, the narrative and cultural significance of African-American art remains in the public eye, contributing to a more diverse and inclusive understanding of art history and contemporary art. Number two, this one is important, historical correction. Many African-American artists have been historically undervalued and underrepresented, like we all know. Increasing and maintaining their points on art market indices can serve as a form of historical correction, giving these artists the recognition and value that they absolutely deserve. Number three, Influence on institutional decisions. Now listen to this. When African-American artists are consistently performing well in the market, this can influence the decisions of major art institutions, leading to more acquisitions, more exhibitions, and more retrospectives dedicated to these artists. Now, keep in mind, I say perform with a grain of salt. Now I wanna look at some of the most influential indices that experts and enthusiasts turn to for insight, including myself. The first one I wanna talk about is Art Price Index. The Art Price Index is operated by Art Price, and this index gathers and analyzes auction results from around the globe, creating a comprehensive database that tracks the arts markets movements. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is Artnet Price Database. The Artnet's indices draws from their extensive price database, offering specialized insights into different market segments. These market segments could be artists, genres, and geographical regions. The third I wanna mention is Sotheby's Mimosas. Might've said that wrong, but let's move past it. 
The Mimosas Index, now part of Sotheby's analytical tools, tracks artworks sold at auction, providing historical data on market performance. One of the last I want to speak about is the UBS Art Market Report. Though not an index in the traditional sense, the UBS Art Market Report, it, it offers a deep analysis of the art market's performance and it, it includes features similar to those of the market indices. Now that we have a clearer picture of the key players in the art market indices and how they work, we're now kind of primed to dig into what these numbers really tell us. This naturally brings us to lesson two, measuring market pulse through performance or simply how to read the charts. Let's start here. Just like a doctor uses an ECG to monitor the heartbeat, our market indices let us monitor the heartbeat of the art economy. And trust me, this heartbeat tells us a story about vitality, health, and sometimes the need for a checkup. So the big question, what does this ECG reveal? Imagine a line chart with peaks and valleys representing the fluctuating prices and the demand for art. When you see a sharp peak, that's a spike in demand. Maybe a particular artist has become the talk of the town or a genre has become more popular or more trendy. And when there's a valley, it might indicate waning interest or a market correction. But it's not just about ups and downs. The steady line in between the market's resting rate shows us the ongoing everyday transactions that might not make headlines, but collectively form the backbone of the market. This steady flow can tell us a lot about the market stability and long-term trends. Is it slowly trending upwards, indicating a healthy, growing interest in, in this artwork? Are in this genre, or is it flatlining, suggesting the market is stagnant? Each sale, each auction result, that feeds into the index. It's like a heartbeat, a pulse that keeps the market alive. By watching these patterns, collectors and investors can take their time, or they can time their market entry or exit. I don't agree with that, but it happens. If the ECG shows a healthy, strong pulse with regular peaks, it might be a good time to jump in and ride the wave of a booming market. On the flip side, if the chart shows erratic spikes or a sudden drop, it may signal a volatile market. Time to proceed with caution. The reason I feel it's vital to mention these things and to say it on such with integrity and, and being careful, artists need to know that they are studied in spikes and in valleys. But remember, while these indices give us vital signs, they don't capture the entire health of the art world. There's so much more beyond numbers. There's cultural trends, political movements, and social shifts, all that play into the art that captures our hearts and our minds. I'm not teaching anyone how to study the market to know when to enter or when to exit. I simply just want you to know that this exists. I want you to know that artists are studied in numbers. The value is studied. I don't want artists to change their artwork based on these trends. I just think it's absolutely necessary to know. But remember, just like in games, there's more to art than just winning and scoring points. Art is about what you feel and what you think when you see it, when you're around it. And that's something special that just can't be summed up with a graph are points. And that's something we have to keep reminding ourselves, especially those of us that are paying attention to these numbers. So while the game scoreboard can, can tell us a lot, it, it doesn't capture everything about why art is important to us. Now let's picture an artist as a brand. When an artist becomes very popular, their work can become as valuable as luxury items. This can affect the market, similar to how a new popular product can affect the stock market. The art market indices capture these movements they highlight the artists who are making waves and setting the course for others to follow. So we've learned that these art market indices are like a heartbeat monitor for the art world. They show us how the prices and interest in art are going up and down over time. But these ups and downs tell us more than just how much money art is making. They also tell us what kind of art is getting popular and what styles are becoming the new trend. That brings us to lesson three reading market trends and artist popularity. These indices aren't merely scoreboards and heartbeat monitors. They're compasses, okay, that guide artists and collectors alike through the ever-shifting landscapes of public taste and thematic demand. For both new and experienced artists 
and the galleries that show their work, these art market indices are like a map that shows which artists are getting noticed and what kind of art are hitting the right note with the right people. This info can help them understand why certain artists may be getting attention over others in a specific time period, especially for new artists. If the trends are in their favor, it can mean more people see their art and maybe even more sales, but it's not something to get caught up in. Trust me, our professionals and those who collect art keep an eye on these trends to figure out what's buzzing in the art community. This helps them spot and support up and coming artists sometimes even before these artists get super popular. People who invest in art, kind of like those who invest in stocks, can use these indices to make smart choices based on facts and figures. And you better believe me, they do. They do use them. They keep tabs on which artists are getting attention, which art styles are in the spotlight, and which time periods in art are making a comeback. This way they can put together a collection that's both smart and varied. But again, it's important to remember that the art world is more than just these numbers and you might want to have your own taste. The real value of a piece of art isn't about how much it sells for. The true value also comes from how you personally connect with it. Do you want to live with it? Do you like how it looks? Do you love the story that it tells and how it fits into history and how much people want it? Those who really get art know that its price tag is just one part of what makes a piece of art special. It's truly essential to remember the balance between why we love this, our passion for art, and the practical aspects of market participation. It's this equilibrium that brings us to our next vital lesson. So let us ground ourselves in an empirical approach that doesn't diminish our passion, but informs it with prudence. And with that in mind, we segue into lesson four how art is used for diversification and risk management. Think about this. Art isn't just something to be hung on a wall and admired. It's a slice of the economy, a pretty unique one at that. Unlike stocks that might jitter with every bit of financial news, art often holds its ground, immune to the immediate shocks that send Wall Street into a crazy frenzy. Why does it do that, Mariah? because art is valued, again, for more than its price tag. It is treasured for its cultural significance and the emotional resonance it carries. These indices that we keep talking about give us a fascinating narrative. Art can be a stabilizing force in a portfolio, is what it's telling us. When the stock market is on a wild ride, art can serve as a calming influence potentially maintaining its value or even appreciating while other assets are dipping. For artists, this should be an eye opener, okay? The work you are pouring your soul into goes beyond the canvas and beyond the emotion. It plays a role in the grander scheme of wealth and cultural heritage. Artists' creations are not just outlets of creativity, but are assets that can endure through economic turbulence offering a diversified revenue stream for collectors. Now for collectors and investors, the intersection of art and finance is it's a delicate one. It's about marrying the emotive allure of art with the strategic savvy of investment. By incorporating art into an investment portfolio, there's an opportunity to balance out market volatility with something that not only has the potential to hold its value, but it also is something that enriches your personal experiences. However, it is incredibly crucial to recognize the unpredictable nature of art as an asset class. While it can provide shelter in the storm of market downturns, it also demands a very informed approach. Our market indices serve as a ledger of past performances and a guide to navigate future investments, offering historical insights and forward-looking projections. Now, as we go into our last lesson, we're not just armed with historical data. We're also equipped with cutting edge technology that enhances our ability to predict and adapt to trends. This fusion of past wisdom, present insight, and future tech gives us a comprehensive toolkit for understanding and navigating the art market. And so we arrive at lesson five, the future of predictive insights. Our fifth and final lesson looks ahead with a visionary gaze. We'll dive into how emerging technologies like big data and machine learning 
are revolutionizing art indices, providing predictive insights that, that could help folks future-proof collections. This is where art meets science and where savvy collectors can stay a step ahead of market trends. Artists, don't let this scare you, okay? I'm telling you all of this because technology is not the devil. It's your friend. It's happening and you should know about it. These technologies digest crazy amounts of data, past sales, exhibition histories, artist biographies, which blows my mind, and even social media trends. They identify patterns invaluable and invisible to the naked eye, forecast potential market shifts, and provide a glimpse into the future popularity of artists and art movements. I'm big on technology. I'm a supporter of technology and I embrace technology because history shows whether we're a fan of it or not, it's going to happen and it's going to evolve. And if we learn how to work with it, it will work with us. For collectors, this means an invaluable tool at your disposal. Predictive insights can inform when to acquire a new piece or when it might be time to let one go. As an advocate for black art and black artists, I think collectors that have that as a focus have a different approach and should have a different approach because one of our main goals is to preserve culture. Now y'all do with that what you want, but use it in this way because these tools can signal the emergences of a new artist on the cusp of recognition or warn of a market bubble about to burst. And we all should know about that from 2020, 2021. For investors, these insights are akin to financial analyst reports or for the nuanced world of art. They can help you make data-driven decisions, balancing the emotional joy of art with the practicalities of return on investment and what you're spending your money on. And for artists, understanding these trends can guide you in your career. It's not about chasing the market, but about knowing where the currents are flowing, allowing you to navigate your path with informed confidence. Honestly, artists, this protects you from becoming a bubble. If you and your team can study these trends and embrace them, as we embrace these predictive tools, we must do so with a blend of enthusiasm and caution. The art market with this sentiment and subjectivity cannot be wholly predicted by algorithms. Yet, these tools can offer a lens bringing into a focus that trends that shape our decisions. Together, we're not merely spectators, of change. We are its navigators, charting a course through the confluence of creativity and computation. The future of art collection is now. <laughs> and some of us don't want to hear all of this data-driven, computer-driven, how to track the market-driven stuff. For some people, it's going to make you upset that we're even talking about it. But the reality of it is, I don't want it to jade anyone but I want you to know that this information is already there. This information already lives on the internet and people are already using this information to help them make decisions. I'm not teaching anyone how to necessarily, like we mentioned earlier, go into a market and know how to time themselves to come out of the market. People are already doing that and they're already working with others to help them learn how to do it even better. And to add on top of that, this technology that's coming our way will help them do it in a more simple way. And if you don't know that this technology exists, if you don't know that it's there as an artist, as an artist manager, as someone that actually wants to protect artists and have integrity in your practice, in your work that you do with artists, you're doing yourself a disservice not understanding these indices, not understanding the technology that's coming. You're doing yourself a disservice and the artists that you work with a disservice and not acknowledging that these tools exist. It's important to note that while these tools can provide valuable insights, they are not foolproof. The art market is influenced by a myriad of factors, including cultural shifts collector preferences, and global economic conditions that can be difficult to quantify. Moreover, the emotional and subjective nature of art appreciation means that no algorithm can predict with absolute certainty how the art market will respond to a particular piece of art. Now, 
that had me a little bit hyped because I get really enthusiastic and passionate about all of that. So I'm going to end it there. <laughs> I also want to extend a special invitation to each one of you. If you're inspired by what we've shared here today and you yearn to delve a little bit deeper into the world of art, I encourage you to explore Elise Art Group. Now, we founded Elise Art Group with a commitment to empowerment and innovation. Our mission is to empower and elevate artists by offering support and opportunities advocating for a world where their voice is truly heard and their work is celebrated. We envision a global community which we're building right here, where art is not just seen, but felt resonating across boundaries, making art accessible to all, which we're doing right here. This vision is underpinned by our core values, which are empowerment, integrity, diversity, inclusivity, innovation, passion, and community. These aren't just words, they're the fabric of our existence. They're the fabric of why we do what we do. And it's my pleasure to highlight a few of the brilliant stars at Elise Art Group. We are incredibly proud to represent a roster of extraordinary artists. You guys may know him, Lamont French, who has dynamic work that challenges our perceptions. Kobe Dill, an artist whose lens captures the raw, unspoken narratives of urban life and Erica Alonzo whose vibrant palettes and textures evoke emotional landscapes. By aligning with Elise Art Group, you're not just supporting these artists, you're becoming a part of a movement even beyond this channel, a movement that values integrity, innovation, and inclusivity in the arts. You're helping to sustain a space where artists like Lamont, Kobe, and Erica can continue to create, inspire, and redefine the boundaries of what art can be. I also invite you to join the Elise Art Group newsletter. So visit Elise Art Group, www.eliseartgroup.com or follow us on Instagram. If you want to add to this dialogue, make sure you comment in the section below. Make sure you like this video. It's really helpful for all of these algorithms we keep talking about. And subscribe. If you want these videos to pop up on your homepage and you want to learn more about art and you're interested in all the crap we talked about today, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time with more stories behind the canvas, stories that shape our world and color our perspectives. Until then, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep celebrating the art that brings us together.